Okay. Huh? Okay. okay. <clears throat> All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the House of Commons. Like we told you, we are back, and we're back to stay this time. Thank God for Zoom. Zoom is going to help us. No matter where we are in the world, we can see this, do the show. So you guys will be happy. So nobody will be harassing me or LD or Ike on Instagram and Facebook and asking us about what the fuck. Oh, <laughs> excuse my language. Excuse my language, but that's fine. This is House of Commons, by the way. Our topic for today. Oh, by the way, my name is Pascal Latuma. I'm LD Demola. And you're Suji. Or Johnny. Ike Steele. Man. Okay. okay, guys, I know that somebody asked me to make sure that we give them our handle for social media. My handle is at Pascal Atuma. At LD Mola. It's Johnny 2.0. At the Ike Steel. At the Ike Steel. Okay, good, good, good. Welcome to the House of Commons. So our topic for today is very unique because the way we do it now, we listen to what the fans say and what they've been sending us, and we're going to go through everything that's been sent to us. But today, we're going to talk about the economic survival of the black man. The economic survival of the black man in the world. Um, how do you, you go, you yeah. go first. So I'm going to start with the reason why I picked this topic or brought this topic up in general. Um, mm -hmm. Previously, in years prior to this, I worked in the bank. And I learned a little bit about economics. Not too much, but just a little bit. I grew up in Lagos, Nigeria, in a predominantly black nation. Um, I've lived in Los Angeles, California for quite some time. Long story short, I've been to England, I've been to different parts of the world. And from my perspective, it always seems like when it comes to economics, black people in general have a harder time but mm. I wanted to make this topic specific to black men because I feel like in this generation and from my projection going forward, black men are going to have a very hard time surviving on earth economically in general. So I think that's a kind of important discussion for us to have. I want to know kind of if anybody has any input, any input on why this is the case, if this is valid or not. Also, mm -hmm. what are some steps that people have taken to become successful black men. And when I say success, I'm not talking about abundance of money. Money is not the, it's not, it's not financial success only, just economic comfort. And then also, what can we do to keep economic strength going forward? So kind of just kind of a grand scheme of economics in the black man's world. And then, you know, how we survive going forward. Can I say something before everybody well, jumps before, in? And, 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 yeah, and before you come in, let him explain something. Okay. Explain to the layman who is listening uh, what is when you talk about economics, break economics down. Okay. So from my perspective, it feels like from what I've seen, the black man is economically dependent on other, you know, other people's resource. It seems like the black man is dependent on a slice of somebody else's pie. And it doesn't mm -hmm. seem like we have our own pie. Right, so everywhere I go, when people tell me that Nigeria is an independent country, yeah, it's independent theoretically, but is Nigeria really an independent country? And then when you look at different mm -hmm. countries around the world, when you look at Jamaica, when you look at different cities within other countries like Peckham in the UK, Compton, California, Brooklyn, New York, when you go to different parts of the world and you look at the black economic reality, it's very different from what progress seems to look like and what comfort seems to look like. And specifically, because of how the world is being structured currently, it seems like black men are starting to go lower and lower and lower in the economic pyramid or mm -hmm. the economic triangle. So just to kind of put things in a bubble, black men seem to be dependent on other people's slice of the pie. How do we get our own pie? How do we gain economic independence? Does that make sense? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Any, any, you go, please. I just wanted to start out because um, when I was growing up, uh, since I was maybe seven or eight years old, my mother told me, uh, she was driving, I was in the back seat. Mm -hmm. She said, you're going to have to look for a, a job. This, she said it in Igbo. But you're going to have to look for a job where white folks are looking for you. Mm -hmm. So that was the mantra that I was taught as a kid that 
if I'm going to make it in life, I need to do something that white folks are going to need me. So uh. I wonder, is it even possible to do it through the means of working for white folks? You're probably going to have to set up your own type of institution mm -hmm. separate away from whatever they're doing in order to be successful. But the very fact that my mom, who's, who's been in this country for some time, actually, by that point, she's had experience, she knew America, she understood America. Mm -hmm. And what she got from that was, you got to do something that white folks need you in. If you don't do that, you're not going to make it in this world. Mm -hmm. And I think the only way to get out of that is to create something for yourself that is is uh, uh, either you you build an institution collectively with other folks that are similar to you if you can do that or you do something independent that doesn't need any other structural institutions that you can develop on your own like apt like you know these kinds of things mm -hmm. that's the only way to do it. but now that we've had this situation with COVID 19 you've now started to limit some of those avenues and ways black men, which is probably why you brought this topic up because mm -hmm. you're cutting down our opportunity now. So now we're limited now. And um, I know we're gonna touch more on it and build more on it, so much more to talk about. I, I don't, cause I know Pascal, everybody got a lot to say, mm -hmm. but I think where I'm seeing things go is the, the one thing that they can't take away from you is your artistic mind and your those types of endeavors mm -hmm. you can't take that away from me so at least that's something i can create on my own mm -hmm. whether it be writing art music whatever it may mm -hmm. be but it's um i feel like it's been limited down to that unless you build your own institutions build your own bank build your own schools and all those other things because you have to it's it's a whole type of ideology and thinking that keeps us out of the door mm -hmm. so how do we get how do we get in into the door or do we make our own door you know what i'm saying so i it's uh go ahead but mm -hmm. pascal okay uh no ike ike you go oh uh, we can't hear you I, I, can, can you hear us? I, can, I can i can hear you can you guys hear me yeah now we can okay go ahead lots of idea um do you know, I, I was just thinking for a second, but I was thinking outside the box. I, I, I'll, I'll play with some, some things. I think mm -hmm. I can go live while we're doing this. I can be showing this live. But anyway, that's just yeah. by the way. Okay, what I was, what I was uh, going to say is that, well, this is a very big, broad topic mm -hmm. again. Like we used to, we always address things that really needs time to unpack, mm -hmm. to un address. But anyway, it's a great topic, though. Um, Amy, I think you, 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 you hit the nail on the head by saying things like you have to be your own bosses pretty much, you know, mm -hmm. create your own things because the truth is, um, I don't think anybody will give you any opportunity mm -hmm. and especially as a black man, the black man has always been seen as the threat in society. Just your physical presence alone, mm -hmm. you're a threat to, you know, that's how it's perceived in America, right? Mm -hmm. So um, the, the the very good example I would I would share here is uh, Damon Dash. Dame Dash came on the Breakfast Club. My goodness, and he hand answered and he dealt with this topic. You know, to the surprise that he sh he pretty much shut the show down. Mm -hmm. You know, but you need to watch it to see the dynamics. Yeah, I recall. Him. I remember. I've seen it. Oh, you watched that episode? I've seen it multiple times. Amazing, amazing episode. So. He was saying that even his son, I think his son is about 24 or something, how he has taught, taught his son not to have a boss, that he has never had a boss in all of his life. Blah, you were just thinking, of, just things about being creative and being resourceful and, mm -hmm. and having to do things. Because if you want somebody else to give you anything, you will keep wanting for the rest of your life. It's, you know, you will never, nobody will give you something to the point where you'll be satisfied not to want more, right? More. People it's impossible. Portion of what they have. So, but when you create something from yourself, by yourself, for your own, then you have abundance. Mm -hmm. uh, Got it. We'll go into that. Okay. So, okay. So, um, I'm going to put it this way. For all the black men out there watching or black women watching, everything starts from the house, the home. 
the survivors used to learn from home. Teach the children to be independent of anybody else. No matter how much money you have, let them wash their own dishes. Let them make their own bed. Mm. Let them sometimes help in, in mowing the lawn. Let them help in washing the car. Don't take the car to the car wash. Let them wash that car. Because in doing that, they're learning a skill at home. Mm -hmm. A survival skill. When, they, when you're cooking, let that little boy or little girl sit in that kitchen and you just sit down and tell the little girl what to do, put inside that pot. That's mm -hmm. where they're going to learn. Because once they acquire a skill and become independent, it's going to get into their mentality of independence. Their, their mentality is going to be set up mental state independent. I'll give you an example. Myself, since I was born, I've only worked for somebody nine months. Mm. Since I was born, I've only worked for any human being on earth nine months. And what was that nine months? That was the first nine months I moved to the United States of America. Mm. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And I only worked to study the country. And immediately that, mm. but knowing that my father, growing up, I saw my dad do his own thing. I didn't see him work for anybody. Do you understand what I'm saying? And my father always says, my father says this way, the same effort you put in working for someone mm -hmm. is the same effort you put in growing your own business. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. The same stress of waking up in the morning by 7 a.m. and rushing to go meet a, uh, go to your office so that you won't be late. Your boss won't, won't be late. You want to make it by 8 a.m. Wake up by that 7 a.m. too and start working for yourself for, by 8 a.m. Mm -hmm. Okay. The difference... The di can, I Sorry, can I ask you a question? The difference... Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'll ask you after that. I'll ask you after that. Okay, okay. The difference is this. You're going to spend 20 years working for someone, grow the person's business. Whenever you get to a certain age, the person gets tired of you, they will retire you. They will, you, you are gone. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Whereas you're going to spend these 20 years working for yourself, growing for your business. The same suffering you're suffering, working for this person, is the same you're suffering, growing your own. By the time you get older, your son or someone will take over that business and you can still be getting from that business. Okay. And also remember, also remember, if you don't build, what would your children build on? Mm. Mm. Okay. Now here's so a question. When you talk about the economic survival, of, the economic survival of a black man, it all starts from foundation. Now let me ask this question. What foundation? Yeah, okay, go ahead. And I want, John, you may be more in tune with this than I am, maybe, to go deeper into the history of why this is the case. But mm. the first question I want to ask Bros Pascal, you specifically, do you think, and this may be controversial, but I need to ask it anyway. Do you think black marriage understands black male self-employment? And from start to finish, the good and the bad. Do you think black, and I'm asking this specifically because from what I've seen, when a, a black man's obstacle in creating a successful, tangible business is way more difficult than anybody else's. And when you look at it from the blueprint level, most of the time, it's not as luxurious, especially in our culture. You gotta admit it. It's not as luxurious as my husband is a doctor, my husband is a lawyer, my husband is an engineer. Even those things could be seen as independent businesses, but for someone who wants to start his own thing away from any other kind of connections and just starting by himself, do you think black relationships understand a man's plant, a man's version of planting the seed and building his own business? Do you think we understand that? Or what are your thoughts? Okay, so that okay, that's part that's part of why we're doing this show. Mm -hmm. See, whatever you sow is what you're going to reap. There's the different kinds of satisfaction mm -hmm. when you want to do business. Are you trying to get socially satisfied? Are you trying to get emotionally satisfied? Mm -hmm. Or are you trying to get economically satisfied? Mm -hmm. Am I making, you understand where I'm coming from, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Do you want to 
you want to be out there boasting my 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 son, my husband is a doctor, my husband is an engineer, da 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 da. When you guys are actually broke or not doing very well, mm -hmm. you guys are trying to live up to that doctor status, living a five star home, mm -hmm. right? Which is social satisfaction. Not with the Joneses. Or do you rather, yeah, or do you rather have a husband who owns a a, a, a lawn mowing company? Mm. The multi. Mm. Who's a multi? Mm. Who can actually, who can actually buy a hospital? Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, so mm. you, you people, so a lot of people go for different things. Someone emotional satisfaction, someone social satisfaction, someone economic satisfaction. But since this focuses on economy, we need to let the black women out there understand that if your man has a vision, please support him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Support him. Because if you don't support him, he may not survive. Because the worst thing, the worst thing for a guy trying to build a bakery, right? Mm -hmm. To hear from his wife is, what do you, why are you trying to build a bakery? All the bread in Walmart, have people bought all the bread? Can mm -hmm. you beat these people's bread? Da, 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 da. No! What makes you think that, what, what makes you think that his bread might not become the best? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know his foundation? Do you know if his grandfather did bread? And mm -hmm. he studied some kind of uh, ingredients that other people don't know out there. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, so what you said is about education. We need to start educating our people to be supportive so that we can grow the, uh, the black man's economy mm -hmm. in the way that Audi. Okay, let's use Ike, for example. You just saw Ike's son, right? Mm -hmm. Is it best for Ike to spend the rest of the 20 years working for someone, bringing money home and taking care of this kid, or spend the rest of the 20 years building a small business that by the time it's 10, 15, that business has grown, this boy now will be about 17. By the time that business is 25 and is making strong, strong impact, this boy will be about 20-something, a graduate. Now joins his father. By the time Ike is old enough, this boy has learned that business, take over, and they will transfer it to the children. That's what the white people are doing. Mm. Okay, uh, I'm glad you mentioned it. And Bros, yeah. Ike, I want you to oh, chime oh, in on this. Do you? don't be friendly. Let me give yeah. you an example. Now, let me give you an example, Sabik. Why do you think that my brother and I will have Sabik sports, Sabik records, Sabik this, Sabik things, Sabik this? You know why? Mm. But we want a city won by. Even when we are gone, once you are an atoma, you don't need to build a new business name. Mm. Ah. If, you want to do if you want to do technology, you can do the big technologies. If you want to build a hospital, you can do the big hospital. So why do you think, you wanna, Chief, you but wanna, Chief, why do you think we don't think like that? Why, why is this, why is it such a revolutionary idea to start something and pass it down. Why don't we think like, what's the problem? Like, why don't we? It starts from home. It starts from day one. Like Ike, I, I'm going to keep using Ike because Ike is the one that, you know, people understand what they see physically mm -hmm. more than what they hear. That song that just came to Ike now, he just saw Ike, he just saw the screen, and he saw three other men. Mm -hmm. The three men he saw are what? Black men. Mm -hmm. And his father is telling him to keep quiet that we are shooting something. His father is letting him know that we are important. Mm -hmm. mm. His father is mm -hmm. already building already building his mind that when, I, when you want to discuss something important, there are some black men you can discuss it with. Mm -hmm. So it all, it all comes from grooming, from, from childhood. I don't work for anybody. My brother Stanley doesn't work for anybody. My, Oscar, my brother Oscar is the president of our company, who is also a senior lecturer. He's not a lecturer in school to make money. No, mm -hmm. that's a goal. That's mm -hmm. something we're looking for. You understand? So it all starts, and it is never too late to start thinking transgenerational well. Mm -hmm. See what, let me tell you what white people do better than us. I'm sorry, I'm going to use this, like, I'm going to use somebody's name, David Ducrane. Mm -hmm. David Ukraine is the first white boy that directed a white friend of mine who believed in me, right? Directed my first film. 
right, which was also his first time directing a feature film. Go on IMDb today and type in David Duquesne. Because of his father's connection and his generational transfer that we're talking about, David is now a big time producer, director, way more credits than me. Because someone gave him, gave him a, head, a head start. No one gave me a head start. I had to mm -hmm. come into Los Angeles and be homeless for a few months if I find my way. Can you please say that again? No, 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 no. Don't just skip over that. Can you say that again, what you just said? David had a head start. Uh, but for me, there was no head start. I had to come into Los Angeles and be homeless for some months before I find my way. Okay. And I'm not ashamed, I'm not ashamed to say, it. yes, I was. That's why I needed you to say it because why do you think, how do you think that helped? Why do you think that was important? Or do you think that was important? The first question you should ask me, why did I get myself into that point? Yeah. Why did I get myself into that point? Is because we didn't do what the white people did. Mm. My father owns a building material business mm -hmm. in Omaha at the state. Why didn't my brother and I, when we finished school, go back and take over the business from my dad? Why did we find it necessary that we needed to come to America to do what? Mm. Mm. Am, I, am I making sense? Mm -hmm. Why did we have to come to America? Because when we finished school, we should have just joined Papa's business. Mm -hmm. And that is an old man. We have gone to school with new innovations, right? Mm -hmm. innovative ideas. We should have brought those innovative ideas into from my father's business was called Atoma and Source. Fact. Do you understand? Can I say something, I say something you know about we... what you're saying, Pascal, real quick? Mm -hmm. Can I say something about what you're yes. saying? Because I think, I think what LD is trying to push at is there is a societal within our, let's say within our culture, mm -hmm. there are culture beliefs that people have internalized Mm -hmm. So it may not be your nuclear family that thinks like this, but mm -hmm. your auntie, your cousins, mm -hmm. that social pressure of you need to, success looks this way. Mm -hmm. And if you ain't doing it this way, you're not successful. You can't start from the bottom. You have to be up, uh, up here or mm -hmm. you're not worth shit. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think it's when and where do we challenge these kinds of ideologies? Mm -hmm. You talked about when you're a kid or when you're a child, you, you know, your, your father's showing you that this is the family business this is how we're going to do it. But it's, I think the bigger thing is our women, our, our men and everybody have to be on the same thing. We can't take on what we think white folks are doing and what we think success is in their eyes mm -hmm. and take that on for ourselves. And it doesn't benefit us. And I think that's what we it do. Doesn't. And it, 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 instead of saying, I don't care what I, how I start, I'm, this is my goal, this is what I'm doing. What, I don't care what the optics look like, mm -hmm. but that's not the reality. The reality is if my auntie called me and say, hey, now how are you doing? Where am I? I'm sitting in the back seat of my car right now because <laughs> if I'm doing that, that's a different discussion. If I'm doing the Steve Harvey before Steve Harvey, you know, because you're talking about Steve Harvey, right? Steve Harvey, yeah, yeah, Harvey that yeah, way, right? exactly. he went through that process. Yeah. If he was to come out and say, this is what I'm doing, somebody support me. And it's so funny. People call him out for cooning all the time, but it was a white family and it was white folks that took him in and said, I don't care about what you what, about that situation. And this is it's sort of a weird social trend of us looking how we look at people and judge people. That's why we're doing this show. Let me answer Amy on that. Okay. Amy. It is time for young, young black men out there, those between the ages of 10 and 20, who is trying to find their life, to look at those old men and old women who's about 35, 40, who fell to stop <laughs> giving them advice. Damn. You fell on this, why should you advise me? Damn. Damn. That's all I, I mean, that's all I'm saying. Ooh. That's what I'm. I'm that's what we need say, to hear. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sir. If you fell right. on an exam, you are a failure yourself. Thank you. Now. You can, don't tell me stories of how you felt so I can correct it. Don't That's tell me to read some rats you read. Mm. Because the rats you read didn't work. You no, are Pascal, hold on, hold on, Pascal. 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 They don't believe, but they don't look at that. See, you have to look at that and look at the failure 
and the comeback as and frame it that way. They don't look at it that way. They look at it as I'm not doing that no more, or it didn't work, and I I tried to do this 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 thing. I end up going to do medicine because that's how they frame it. But you're framing it and saying you didn't well, you didn't, that, didn't work out for you. Big, it may that, work out that, for me. It didn't work out for me. Okay, okay, uh, Audi. I'm not trying to talk about the show, but let no, me tell you. No, I'm I'm about I just it. wanted to put that in there. Okay, I'm talking about it. It is time for people to stop talking what you don't know. Fact. If you have not been a millionaire before, you don't know the lifestyle. Yeah. Of fact. It's fact. fact. If, you not, fact. if you have not been a millionaire before, you don't know the process of becoming a millionaire. Fact. 100%. Am I, am I making sense? Fact. Yes. So if you're my uncle, if you're my uncle, and I'm seeing you making $700 a week for the rest of your life, are you able to take a credit and get a small three-bedroom house I have children, and that doesn't mean you're successful. I'm not trying to be like you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, Bill Gates is Bill, Bill Gates. How many dicks does he have? Mm. Mm. Uh, right. Okay, Ross Ike. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Like 80 billion. Ross Ike. Okay. okay. Ike, I'm sorry to say like this. So, young black man, listen to me. My name is Pascal Atuma. Don't listen to anybody who is a failure to advise you. No. Instead, read books, watch movies Fact. like I watch Secret. Fact. Watch something that can impact you. Watch shows. Don't listen. Okay, I mean, let me stop talking. Sorry, no, no, Ross Ike, Ross Ike, I want to bring up something that you said in the previous episode and kind of relay it to this. You said specifically, what service can I provide? Right? You said, what service can I provide? Because obviously, if you find something that people need, it's probably more logical for you to provide that service. I also yes. want to bring up, I want to tie that into status, right? Yes. Because a lot of my friends, one, one of my friends specifically, when we talk about black economics, I always say, I don't feel like we black folks really know our role. And he gets very upset when I say that because from his perspective, we should reach for the same stars that everyone has reached for and mm-hmm. actually reached, which is fine. But I look at things from zero to 100, right? I look at if I have a $100,000 job and this specific license, but when they fire me, I go back to zero. I don't believe that's success because there is no real foundation. But if I build it on a service, oh. right? Like if I have a room of 100 welders and I know welding is always going to be a service needed, right? And then I can build from those 100 welders, I can build a movie studio. From that movie studio, we can build distribution, right? I want you to kind of go deeper into provide a service and kind of tie it into our kind of status shame. Don't forget of, about Ike. Yeah, I, I want Ike to specifically talk about it. Our 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 need to tap into service providing, but also our status shame. Like if I am not a doctor, I'm a failure. I want you to kind of chime in on that. Okay, very good. I mean, you guys, thank you. This 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 show is very. Very. Now, I mean, as everything is happening, I'm seeing a great reason for this show. This, mm-hmm. is, this is very good. A very good platform. Mm-hmm. Um, even though the topic we started on is economic survival of the black man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Pascal, you took it to another level. You took it to a level higher and <laughs> broad, very, very broad. <laughs> hey, this, this, this is what yeah, I'm very passionate about. It. I see you're very, very, very passionate about very it. Passionate about it. Yeah. A lot of things that we all are dealing with in our <laughs> and the truth the truth about the matter is that you cannot take advice from people that haven't done something you're trying to do mm-hmm. and it's just a it mm-hmm. it doesn't mm-hmm. happen and we make that mistakes a lot mm-hmm. uh, but again the foundation is the key to everything the foundation because as human beings and as much as as black because we're black men and that's the the topic today right Mm -hmm. even you know um not the numbers are much higher in our circle because we don't start with this foundation of seeing wealth abundance possibilities we start with you know a lot of people started from the projects what do you see in the projects what is your environment what do you what are the people you talk to how were you raised because the, the the essence of a human being you, we are product of our environment, and and your your environment includes your father, your mother, 
your the schools you went to, the streets, the the, the, the things you exposed to, the kinds of you know how you were raised. When you were not, the foundation was not proper. You can't just overnight, you know, become this superhero that wants to do X, Y, Z business and knows all the rules of doing business, right? Mm -hmm. So the foundation we started was not the very best. Very great point. Somebody sit in his his microphone. Somebody sit in his microphone, please. Hey. Somebody should, okay, go ahead. Somebody, okay, go ahead. Okay, so. um, Okay. so, so, So definitely, that is a very, very big part of economic survival because when your foundation is right, definitely you learn to see opportunities but without waiting to have a job, you know? Because we talked a lot about this job, job, job thing. The, the, the truth is that 99% of us are trained to have a job, mm-hmm. <laughs> not to be resourceful. Don't lose your thought. Let me define what you uh, the, the decision for them. A job is something you have to do to survive. Mm-hmm. Whereas a career is something you chose to do to mm-hmm. build. Mm-hmm. Black Fact. people should stop looking for jobs Fact. and start looking for something, choose something they want to build on. The difference is this. The job is easier to get, but the career is not easy to get. Mm-hmm. Stop going the easy way out. Baba, you are better continue. I needed to say that before I forget it. Great. Sorry. No, that was good. Yeah. That was good. Um, okay, so the status shame based on what you end up doing because of what people will say, the society, the family, blah, 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 blah. Well, that, that goes a lot. <laughs> there, there's a, a lot of ways we can, we can really um, address this. I, I interviewed a doctor one time on the red carpet, right? This guy said he did medicine for 15 years, but now he's into acting. So my thing was, wow. why... Did you have to do doc, a medical doctor for 15 years and now you're doing acting? He said, well, because his family is crazy, they, they pressured him to doing something. So he's done med, uh, he's a doctor, he's been it for 15 years now, he doesn't love it, he doesn't enjoy it, he doesn't find fulfillment in it, and he's starting to go for auditions around town. And I'm like, wow, mm-hmm. you know? So so when you say when you say status shame, you know, a lot of people. A lot of humans. I, I, I used to be part of this until I started learning to do what I love, what I want, not listen to what people say. We, we tend to do mm-hmm. things based on what the family will say, what people will say, not mm-hmm. you want to get praise from the other people, mm-hmm. and especially parents, mm-hmm. especially parents, because I have, I have um, and I don't want to put them on blast. I have some young ones, right? And when I talk to them and they say these things, I'm like, wow, so people still think and operate like this in this day and age. But yep. it's sad. It's yep. sad that most parents still want their children to be doctors, engineers, lawyers, bankers, blah, 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 blah. Instead of showing these people to find a, how did Tiger Woods become a, 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 golf, a golf player? How did Beyonce become a singer? These are people that started these things at two three years old. Mm-hmm. So you have to learn to study your people, your children, your, your siblings, and see what they are gifted and talented, what they enjoy mm-hmm. doing. That is their calling for life. Okay. Yeah. You can, can help. I ask, can I ask a question to everybody? Can I ask a quick question to everybody? As a black man, yeah, yeah. I, I, I feel like over the years, you know, I've, and I've started to divide my friends into two categories. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the two categories are, I have survivalists and I have thrivers. Ah. And they're, so there are people that I talk to, when I hear them talk about certain things, all they're talking about is how I'm going to survive, which is very valid and very important. But I don't hear anything about their interests, their passions. And I think what I'm trying to move into is how do I, you know, marry the two in a way that makes sense where I'm thriving, I'm thriving, I'm, I'm winning, I'm enjoying my life, I got a nice house, I make money, whatever the success looks like to whoever, but at the same time, I'm surviving. But I have a lot of friends that they've only known survival. And the justification is, I'm black, I'm a black man, I'm a black woman, and I ain't got time to be sitting here talking about thriving and all those other stuff. I'm just trying to get it because the opportunities aren't even there for me 
back to the original question of this whole thing. You know what I'm saying? So what are we gonna, so what is the, go ahead. Can I answer, I wanna just answer really quickly and then I want them oh. to kind of chime into this. But I will say, I don't care who gets offended with this. I generally don't care. <laughs> I'm being very honest. This is a promo. This is a promo. This is a promo. When yeah. I stopped listening to my fellow community and I stepped away for a second, I was able to hone in on what made me feel my, understand my why and build on that and then come back and join the group. Because mm. I was raised in one of, I mean, all of us, we're African. We're raised in households that are extremely educated, a hundred million percent. But I knew I wanted to own myself because I, I had started working in a professional world at age 14 in a real job with the government, like a real job. And I, I was working, giving people career advice. And I started noticing, number one, the black male reality in the workforce is completely different from anybody else's experience. That's number one. Completely different. And it's not completely different in a good way. And I started noticing these trends and I started looking at certain family members, male, black, who were in the workforce. And I saw how they saw the world. It felt a little bit incomplete. Then I worked for a, an Arab contractor and I saw how he saw the world. And he saw the world as if he owned the world. He didn't understand. I'm just being honest. I don't, people can get offended all they want. He saw the world as he owned it, almost to the point where it was getting out of hand. I'm like, bro, you're going to get in trouble because you generally don't care. And I'm not going to mm. go into the stipulations of, or the details of he may be doing certain things that are illegal. I don't know those things, but I'm just talking about how he saw the world. When I got around him, I then realized I have an uncle who's just like him, who sees the world just like him, but his community seems to hinder yeah. everything that he imagines. And I'm like, yo, why is this? And then anytime I speak in a positive light of that uncle who I believe sees the world and has all the licenses to carry out his existence like this guy. Ah, get out, get out, this guy, that, out. Every time I talked about him, <laughs> yeah, what are you talking about? Got out, got out, yeah. The fact that he doesn't have this certain amount of money. But I'm like, but this guy owns his hours of the day. And I don't mm. think he saw value in that. So I just want to say, as soon as I stepped away and started listening to who I believe I needed to listen to, and I started mm. building on that, I was able to come back even more confident around people who are way more successful than me because I knew what I could provide to the world in form of a service. So can mm. you guys kind of chime in? Yeah. Okay, okay. I, I want to come in there. And this is straight to the black man. There's a lot of ways that they're imprisoning your, me your mentality. They, mm. they put you in prison, me mental imprisonment. Mm. Number one, they say you, you're getting benefits. You're getting insurance. You're getting car loan. You're getting um, uh, dental insurance. <laughs> You're getting health insurance. Mm. <laughs> I wish I could. I wish I could use the language I really want to use. Mm. My brother, use freeze, 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 <laughs> motherfucker! Why can't you do your own business and get your own insurance? Period. Back. That you see, because we're talking about the economic uh, survival, right? Mm -hmm. Those things, they put it in place to attract you. It's like catching a fish in the river. Mm -hmm. You put a bait mm -hmm. and you throw it. Pim! The fish put in mouth and boom, boom, you catch the fish. <laughs> Once you catch the fish, you're in control of the fish. Fact. Uh, but what I'm, but so, uh, on sorry, I, I, I absolutely have to interrupt or go because I forgot, <laughs> I need to pick up my daughter. Four o'clock from the gymnastics. Okay, okay and, and plenty of time to go get her. Okay. Got it. If you guys are still, okay, okay, don't I will don't I will we're gonna, we'll finish the show. Okay, we'll finish the show. You wanna finish? Uh, that's part of, that's yeah, you know, Ike, you can go. It's part of being responsible. Okay. That means you're a very, you're a responsible black man. Yeah. Am I lying? Do you guys want to stop uh, this and pick up later? Or no, 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 later? no. Let, let, it, let, it, let him go and we'll just round up this one. This okay. topic, so we don't come. Because I, I think this is very important. Why, I mean, no, why, why don't you take your? Let, let I take his last, uh, take his conclusion, and then yeah, okay. Which is my roundup, or uh, we can end up okay. All right, guys, thank you very much for your uh, contribution. This is in no way over, uh, Pascal. The the thing I wanted mm -hmm. to say before you said that we well, mentioned that word prison is that 
Um, I, yeah, when I remember who said this quote, I'll give it to you. I think it's Price Preacher, but I'm not very sure. It says, you cannot escape from prison if you don't know you are in one. Uh, this thing we are saying about mindset, that's what it's all about. It's all about mindset, but if you don't know you are in prison, you can never escape. How can you be free? All right, that's it. I'll be back. Much love. Okay, Cheers. we'll catch up. I appreciate right. it, brother. All right, so, all right, man. Thanks, bro. So, okay, so where did I stop? I stopped at the creating your own. Uh, L, do you know what? You can eliminate Ike so that the yeah, thing will not be three. Yeah, let me, okay. let me take them off. Perfect. Okay, good. So, so, so what I was saying is this. Stop looking at those things that they throw in that river as bait to catch mm -hmm. you. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Become the one throwing the bait mm. to catch others. Mm. Mm. So mm. That's only... Am I, am I making sense? Mm -hmm. Can you become elaborate? The it because, okay, become the boss? Let me elaborate it. Yeah. Become, be, become the fisherman and stop being the fish. Oh, okay, okay. Mm. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Because right. once you... Once you go through it, then you can be able to teach your children and your nephews. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because if you don't go through the process, you won't understand. Like me, I'm not playing. I'm not boasting. Like I said before, it doesn't matter where you put me in this world. I'm going to create a business. Mm -hmm. If I have to sell granite or water on the street and start it like that, that's what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. But I'm not working for you. Mm. I, now, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong in working for people. No, I get it. No. No, there's nothing wrong in working for people. But I believe in service. And I believe in that my own service, my own calling is to create the job, not to do the job. Okay, I'm glad you said that because... I like the service part. Yeah, I, I, I'm glad you said that because that's one of the misconceptions when people are talking about, quote-unquote, being your own boss. People think it's this... It always has to be this grandiose thing. To me, it's more about a perspective, mm. right? Because when I talk, just like Ain said, when he talks to certain people who think like survivors or people who think like thrivers, right? Too often when I'm having conversations with people who have jobs, I have a job myself, but I don't see my job as my lifeline. I see it as my bank. I provide a service, exactly. I get my check, and I put it back into my business that I'm in control of, right? And in the, And when I'm established enough in my business, I can walk away from this anytime. Or better yet, if this ever ends, I don't fall off a cliff, right? But too often, I see that we keep waiting for others to discover the new avenues, and then we become the best employee for those people who discover this avenue. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Right? No, we, need to, we, need to get, we need to get out of that mental imprisonment. Yeah. For, for, the, for us to build the economic power that the way you are thinking about it, because it's possible. Yeah. It's very, very possible. Do you understand? Once we get in that zone, when you say, I'm going to create this, this is what it's going to be. Yeah. My brother, that is what it's going to be. Mm. Period. Cure E D. Mm. Now, like you said, you have a job, but you, the money you make from the job you invest in your business. You know yep. what that job is for you? Please, black man, let us use these jobs as stepping stones to exactly. our destiny. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And, okay, so Maybe now... You understand see. what I'm saying? Yeah. Stepping stone. Okay. Either, that's, a, that's, two, that's many re different reasons to have a job, if you want a job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can just take a job in a bakery, a bakery factory just to learn how to do bakery. Mm. You can take a, a job... In a in a car factory, just to learn how to use their car. Well, you see, I have to cut you off what, right there. You? I have to cut you off okay. right there, Chief. You are being too. You are being too Pascal with your perspective. That because I know my goal, I don't care about outside noise, and I'm going to go in and get what I need. Because you said something in the previous episode. Yes. Well, hold on. You said something in the previous episode. <laughs> hold on. You said, I don't. You said you, you mentioned. All my family members basically have nothing less than a master's. I don't have a master's, but I have the certificates for everything that I need to be Pascal Atuma. That's mm -hmm. a Pascal Atuma who knows what Pascal Atuma wants and has already voided out any other opinion. The reality is, when you say something like, I will go to a bakery to learn how to bake because I want to learn how to bake, 
that's not how we think in our community. We think that's a poor idea because you don't see the bigger picture. You see what I'm saying? Yes, I, yes, I see what you're saying. But, but, but if you don't walk, if you don't go to Berkeley school, the only other way to learn how to do Berkeley is don't walk in a Berkeley factory. And what's wrong with me coming to work for you? No, okay, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. When I first moved to LA, I used to be a personal trainer and I used to be a bouncer at the same time. I do personal training during the day and I go and be a bouncer at the club in Riverside mm -hmm. at night. And guess what? When I come to do my personal training job, this guy, small little boy that was my boss, Jewish guy, he'll be talking to everybody, talking to us anyhow. When he's talking, I'll be laughing. Mm. Mm. When he's talking, I'll be laughing. I was an African guy. Why do you always laugh at me? Mm -hmm. And when he say it, I will laugh more. Because you know why? He doesn't know that Pascal is just there to learn that business and see if I can open up a, a gym in LA. Mm -hmm. That way, I don't have to work and, and get my career. Mm -hmm. so, and he didn't also know that I was just using that gym to pay my rent while mm -hmm. I write my speech. Mm -hmm. And guess what? And guess, and guess what? I was still going walking in the gym, writing my first script. Remember, I finished my first script. That the next day, I I went to the gym and I told them that I I, I want to stop working. Mm -hmm. I want to quit. And the guy said, Why? Why you already build clients? Da 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 da. da and we have the beginning like I said because I'm not an employee. Now let me. Okay, stay right there. Now let me. And, your, and, and I and that was my last day walking in Bali Total Fitness, and I went and met my and you boss. Gonna, you going to call him by name, though? Damn. <laughs> okay, let me, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. The reason why I even brought this up and said specifically, do black women understand that? Or does our community, does black marriage understand a man wanting to create his own kingdom? The reason why I brought this up is because I have aunts, a lot of aunts, and I have a lot of uncles who are married to each other. I did not know some of the challenges black men face in the world compared to the challenges black women face. I'll start by saying we live in a service-based global econo economy where it's easier, even in Nigeria, it's the same thing. It's a lot easier for a woman to find a job in the workforce than it is for a man to find a job in the workforce. It's also easier from my perspective, and I could be correct if I'm wrong, for a black woman to find a role in the workforce than it is for a man to find a role in the workforce. So a lot of my uncles have a hard time in the workforce and in starting a business because they have to balance family, work, and the business that they want to start. I brought this up because I remember having a dinner with my aunts. One of my aunts travels to China a lot. She does import and export to Nigeria. Her husband tried to start a business and it never really worked, but he kept trying. But him trying to start that business did not bring, it, bring enough finances into the family to keep it sustainable. They're still married, but it did not bring enough finances. My aunt started her business doing import-export, and she said verbatim, oh, women have passed men, right? Women have passed women men. Are, women are what? She said, women have passed men. Almost as if, and I'm being honest, almost as if now that I have found this financial success, he is an afterthought, and I go as I wish, right? And I don't, I don't mind if that's the perspective that she's going to take. But when I look at the economic structure of black men and black women, especially in modern society, black women have more opportunities and are running laps around most black men. And these women are doing it in the professional world while also being entrepreneurs and being very successful. I don't think black men are doing the same. And Maybe I'm just not an optimist, but I don't believe in love without having. Uh, 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 <laughs> and you go ahead. And you and you go ahead. Uh, you know that's a tricky one because you've already committed to the person. But as I believe that the value system that you walk into the relationship with is going to be the foundation of the relationship. If I get with somebody, I'm like, look, this is who I am. This is what I'm about. I'm about, you know, self determination. I want to be my own business. And it's a, like, you, like LD is saying, it's a mentality. If you're not with that, then, you know, then it's going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. So I think it starts off with 
what is the what are what are the what are your values and i think it goes back to what pascal is saying about even in those situations it still does not matter because this is who i am i know who i am i know what i want i know what i'm trying to do and you can't change that so if i'm if i have my wife is telling me what ooh, ooh, about you know i'm doing this i'm like look this is what i'm this is what i'm doing and this is the reality of what it is. The problem is we get bullied because it's not, we know what other people are saying and what they're doing is just echoing what they, what their homegirls are saying, what the other people are saying. It's a community bullshit that they share amongst themselves. Sorry, excuse my language, but that's what it is. Who cares about what they say? It's about what you believe in yourself. And that's why there are not that many Pascal Latumas in the world because there are very few people that say, Fuck what y'all niggas are saying. I'm doing what I'm doing, regardless of what y'all say. So, but that comes, that comes at a price. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. That comes at a price, though, mm -hmm. that a lot of people are not willing to take or willing to accept. Are willing to admit that you look up to. You don't know the sacrifices and the people they have to cut off. Fact. Let me please come in there, not cutting. Please, no, please, add, please. It's time. It's time for black men to stop being afraid of losing the wrong person. Ah. Mm. Mm. Black men need to stop being afraid of losing those who God did not call to work with you. Mm. Why do you think? Why do you think we cling on to it? What what is what makes us cling up? Because maybe yeah. other people don't do that. Why do we do that? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Fear. Let me give you an example. Mm. Let me give you an example. Mm. My girlfriend now. When I first got together four years ago, every morning she gets up, she goes to work. She come back, she see me, I'm still at home doing my thing. So she says, uh, "You need to go get a job." Who? So, you know what I asked her? I said, since you moved in here, have I asked you to contribute for rent? Hmm. She says, no. So, since you moved in here, have I asked you to pay any bill? Hmm. She says, no. I said, when you're sleeping at night, what time do I get off the bed? She said, you always go up about 2 a.m., 3 a.m. And I said, so you think I get off 2 a.m., 3 a.m.? to go and watch TV in the living room. Mm. I say I get up 2 a.m., 3 a.m. because my business partners in Europe and Africa, they are awake. So I need to be awake. And you always see me go back to sleep about 7.38. That's when I take my break. And I mm. wake up again. I say, by the way, can I see your employment letter? Mm. Mm. And he showed, she showed me an employment letter. You know, she's making thirty-five or five thousand dollars a year. So I asked her, I said, so you want me, Pascal Atuma, mm. to wake up 7 a.m. every morning, mm. get dressed, drive, enter a car, eight, go to office, stay, come back five thirty all year round to make thirty-five to forty thousand, forty-five thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I said, you must be mentally sick. Yeah. Yeah, it's not good. Is she still not my girlfriend not today? Have I gotten a job? But well, she has seen me build three different businesses in the last four years. Mm. Now, when I when I speak, you understand the English. Mm. But you know why? Because I was not afraid to lose her. Fuck love. Love doesn't pay bills. Mm. And love can give you the life you want. Woo! Okay, 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 go, go, go. Don't run away from that. Don't run away from that. Don't run away from that. Do no, not work being real. That. Being Do not real. work away from that. Okay, so it started with this. I said, I don't believe love without money somewhere in the foundation. And he also mm -hmm. mentioned that comes at a price. You also just said, F love, basically, kind of what I was saying, let's get the foundation, the economic foundation, realistically, set first. No, please, I want you to say. When you have when, when you have the economic balance, yeah, do you hear what I, the word I use? Mm -hmm. Economic balance. That means no matter how it shakes, you're still standing. My brother, you get love. 
Yeah. Exactly. And I just want to point out, <laughs> I want to make sure you understand, you find love, but... from my perspective, from my perspective, and this is just my perspective, mm -hmm. I see more black women being a lot more active in education, in, you know, in corporate and in business. That's why it's important for me to kind of specify what are the black men doing short term and long term? Like, what is our approach? Because I don't think it's been that hard for black women to make the switch. They go from what I've seen. And I see a lot more black men being a little bit more complacent. It could be because, again, it's a lot more difficult for us. But to chime into what Bruce Ike said, what service am I providing? I live in Los Angeles, California. I live in a building with a lot of Hispanic males. A lot of them are somehow self-employed. Either an electrician, mechanic, they have something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was going to get into that, yeah. And they're making money. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But it seems like we just, we just want to be workers. <laughs> we don't want to be workers. We want to look good. We want to look good. That's what it's about. We want to look good. We want to we wanna play what we make our wives and dear friends happy. Everybody, yeah, that's my, it. My, my, my husband is a doctor. My husband is an engineer. My husband is a bank manager. My husband is this. Bank manager doesn't mean you have money. Fact. Let me make it clear. The money you're counting is not yours. Low key? Engineer does not mean you have money either, bro. Money, A lot of people don't understand this. It does not. Bro, didn't I go to engineering school? Now, mm. <laughs> so mm. let's get that straight. Mm. Now, the reason why I'm saying it any before you come in is this. Black men need to have vision, have a plan, mm -hmm. a master plan, and go after that master plan. If anybody comes in, wife or girlfriend, they don't fit into that plan, let them go back to they where they go. are. Keep on, keep on going. That's it. Period. I'm yeah. not a pastor. I'm not going to preach to you that the Bible says to death do us part. That's in the Bible. I'm not a pastor. I can't preach that. But what I can preach to you is that anything that doesn't add up to your vision needs to go. And that one, I can use the Bible. The Bible says, if this hand will stop you from going to heaven, do what? Stop, 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 stop. Go to heaven with one hand. Damn, word? Yeah, it is word. Oh, At wow. At the end of the day. It is word. Yeah, it is word. Yes. Yes, and you go ahead because I don't like to go too deep. No, 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 Keep going. I, I was just going to say no, that. No, I, I wanted to just challenge Pascal, even though I agree with him at the same time. I want to challenge Pascal on this one. I do believe that you can have love in as as a part of what you're doing, and you know, because I know you, I know, I knew, I know what you're trying to say, Pascal. It's not just you're not saying love isn't distant, but the foundation of what you're doing is not about love. I get that, but I think that it's possible to have that if the real foundation is understanding, and I think that. If you're with someone that understands this is my life, this is what I do, you won't have all these issues. That's why I believe understanding comes first before you get into this all this other love, all this other love nonsense. Because that stuff that doesn't mean much if you don't understand where I'm coming from. We're gonna be arguing and fighting every single day. Let me let me you know where I'm coming from. You don't understand my mentality. Let me kind of jump in the middle of what Bruss Ike said and what Pascal uh, and, and he said. Love, so, understanding. If you have you said, finish, I'll come in. Okay. okay. Let you. me kind of stand in the middle <laughs> with what Bras, uh, Pascal said and what Ains said. Because the one thing I'll say in, in, in Ains' defense and to support his claim is a real life connection, human connection is extremely important. But there's a saying, time is of the essence and desperate times call for desperate measures. As I've traveled around the world, right, the economic mm -hmm. reality that a lot of black people live in, I don't think any black man should be at ease about anything from my mm. perspective, because mm. I just don't, I don't understand how we can be comfortable with the world if we are not providing new ideas and resources for the future of blackness, because what exactly are we celebrating if we check the status of us as a global, you know, collective of people? I don't understand what exactly we're survival. celebrating. Exactly. Survival. Exactly. Because That's if I'm not creating something that I can pass down, not even just to my own kids, to my people in general, what am I celebrating? You know, and that's why I think it's important to kind of point out the sacrifices that it takes for these desperate measures that black men and black people live in 
in general. <laughs> like we, yeah. our experiences, it, it, it's, it's super critical for us to be resourceful and productive with almost every move we make because of how yeah. challenging it is for us globally, right? So I definitely understand love is extremely important. And not only am I trying to find somebody who's gonna support my goals and my dreams, I also wanna make sure I'm supporting her dreams, but they're gonna have to be, they have to kind of be going the same direction so there's no tension. But at the same time, she needs to understand economics better than I do because we don't have the luxury that a lot of other people have, especially these days. Do you have anything to say, Bruss? Yes, my hand. Oh. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I had what you said, Audi, to find a balance. To find, it's like trying to find, find a girl, a woman that will give that balance. Any, I want to tell you something, but not talking directly to you. I'm, gonna, I'm speaking to all black young men from the ages of 10 to 25 years watching this show. If you're a black man out there watching this show from the age of 10 to 20, 25, my brother, my little brother, don't worry about the love right now. Mm. <laughs> you do your thing. <laughs> oh, God. Eldie, Eldie, Eldie. Eldie, let me be honest. Let me be very honest. Yeah. Don't worry about love right now. Yeah. Build yourself. Build yourself economically. Build yourself educationally. Love will find you. You will have options to choose love. Yeah. Mm. But if you don't build your economic power, you're a black man. Your choices are very limited. Yeah. Act. You are only you are limited to Tiffany Stella or Messi. But if you build your economic power, you are limited to Tiffany, Stella, Macy, Suzanne, Antonio, mm -hmm. Antonita, mm -hmm. Augustina, all are available for you to choose love from. Yeah. Love will come. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's one thing, when we were in high school, when we were in high school, our school principal used to say, seek for the kingdom of Wayek and GCE, and the, every other thing will be added onto it. Mm. For the people in America, it means stick for the kingdom of your GED. SATs and all that. Yeah. Once you get all that, every other thing will be added onto it. Yeah. So my word for the survival of black young men out there, stick for the economic power. When you get it, every other thing will be added onto you. Yeah. From green to yellow, every other thing. But lose it. You lose your, you lose your manhood. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Uh, broke, bros, bros, if you're broke, there are certain, hmm, let me not use this language. <laughs> uh, don't even go, no, 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 no need, we give no, it. Let me not go there, let me, uh, let me not skip away, let me go, because bros, rice has different taste, and it's the economic power of what you have in your pocket that will decide the type of rice you eat. Mm. Mm, I finished. Mm. Mm. Uh, that's, you I know, finished. to be quite honest, and I think this is something that we definitely should revisit live, because and yeah. we can speak about this off camera, but as Bros Ike said, I think this is this is probably more important than anything that we did before, because the internet is upgraded and there's so many different ways we can do it. But Bros Pascal, uh, we definitely should mm -hmm. talk as a group once we're done recording about how we can structure this to make sure that we have actual tangible results-based, you know input because I think we can really do that. But nonetheless, to this topic, I think is one of the more important ones that we will have because a lot of us need to hear this. And I think you're a key, you're a key person because you've experienced the ups and the downs of actually being self-employed before Uber became a thing. Like you've actually gone through the up and down of this, you know, thing that we're talking about. And I think it's very important for us to have definitely you, Bus, I, and myself, and then other people who can actually structure it. So if you know any bankers in the future who can help people structure, okay, set up the account this way, real estate agents, you know, people who can actually contribute tangibly, not just talk, you know, but I really, really like this episode and I think we should definitely give it another try once Russ Ike has, you know, time in his hands. But yeah, I mean, I don't have much more to say, but, you know, I appreciate the- And, and I think, we're, and, and like you guys said before, I think we should do these shows live so yeah. that the viewers can contribute. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Because like what we we're talking about today, the economy of a black man, there might be an economist out there who's a black exactly. man that can contribute. 
yeah. be a medical doctor out there that can contribute. Because all we are trying to do this show, we're not doing it for ourselves. We're doing it to make impact. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, like I, I, I just told the young black men out there, between 10 years and 25, my brother, build yourself and stop talking about love, 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 love. Mm. Love, I don't know how to explain it anymore, but we need to get other people involved. Yeah. So if we can do this show live and put out time when we're going to do this show, when we're going to shoot, so that people can join us, you understand? Mm. That would be beautiful. Amen. Well, guys, make it I have not much to say. Make it more interactive. Yeah. But you have to conclude. Uh, any, any conclude, I conclude, I'll do you wrap up. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I just think that, um, you know, as far as this topic goes, um, like Pascal said, I actually agree with him as one that regards to the, the idea of looking for love and, and basing things like that on love. But I guess my main thing is finding yourself, knowing what you want, being strong and stern about that, and building that up first and i don't, i think one thing one thing i don't know if we touched on was we people most of us don't take that time to figure out who we are as individuals we're always thinking about who we are relative to our family and all these other which is important too but we don't talk about who we are you know as an individual what do i do and um i think the reason why this conversation is important because if, if the black man wants to survive and wants to make it the foundation of that is who am i what am I going to be about and how can I go about doing that for myself? And one thing I'm trying to teach myself is I come first. So whatever I'm doing has got to fit my schedule, fit my personality, fit my, my body. I got to be okay with that. Not what, you know, Auntie Ngozi is saying or oh. what Uncle Obina is saying. Fuck what they got to say. It's about what I'm doing first as the foundation. Then when I, then once I figure that out, then I can now, then we can now have discussion about, okay, you know, or oh, you want to date, okay, what you talking about, what you doing? Or you, oh, okay, you, oh, you want me to go do this? Well, I'm a plumber right now. Oh, I'm doing this. So you better get with it. Oh, you don't like that? Bye. And that's got to be the standard for whatever you're doing. Yeah. Facts. Okay. So my, my, own, my own conclusion is this. If you're a black man out there, think about how to become the employer, not the employee. Mm. Number one, number two, look for career, not jobs. Look for careers, not jobs. Mm -hmm. Number three, try to find something that you can leave for your children. Mm. Try to find, try to find a, something, if it's a career or a business or a service, something that you can leave for your children so they can have a head start. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they can have that head start that you didn't have. Like for me, uh, my brother and I, we are building the name Tabik. So that we can give a head start to my nephews, my children, and our nieces. Mm -hmm. So that's one, even with when we are gone, they can use the name Tabik to continue any business they want. So make sure that you find a way to have something that can give your children, your nephews, your nieces, your next generation a head start. Working for someone, and working for someone, and working for someone without using that money to build a business, once you retire, that one is gone. Mm. Please, mm. let us change that mentality of Be being answer them, sir, madam. Let them answer you, the sir, madam. After all, we all breathe oxygen. Mm. That's my conclusion. Amen. <laughs> and my conclusion is everything they've said, and I think it's, uh, again, going to be not only one of the most important discussions that we're having right now, but it's mm -hmm. going to be one of the most recurring discussions that we have actively because a lot of people need the guidance, including myself. I don't know everything. I just know a little bit. But, you know, the more we learn, the more we can apply as they see each one teach one. Um, you know, everything that they've said, I think it starts with the mentality unapologetically. Like we can't, we cannot mm -hmm. think like it's a bad idea. It's the only idea foundationally. Ownership, and when you say ownership, it sounds kind of grandiose. It doesn't have ownership. to be that Owner, ownership, yeah, it doesn't have to be that big. Ownership. If you own the skill of welding, you own ownership. that skill. Exactly. You own that skill and you dictate when you weld. It's things like that. You know, just kind of being an independent thinker and thinking, as he said, generationally. But you know what, guys? Eldi, can I add something? Please. Let them just look at it as this. That's the difference between a tenant and a landlord. Choose to be a landlord mm. instead of a tenant. Fact. Yeah. Fact. Easy. You know what? <laughs> <With> that said, <laughs> <laughs> you guys, 
You know, that was great. Thank you very much. See you on the All next right. episode. Okay. All right. I